So you want to learn DaVinci Resolve, you're at the right place because I'll show you how to effectively use DaVinci Resolve in 10 minutes. I'll cover all the basics that you'll need to know and get you started in no time. Let's go! Here's what you'll learn in this video. If you follow these 10 steps, you'll be able to fully understand DaVinci Resolve in no time. Let's jump right in. If you haven't downloaded DaVinci Resolve yet, you can go to their website now and download the free version. Okay, when you first open DaVinci Resolve, you're going to see the Project Manager window. Now you can either double click on the Untitled Project or right click and Create New Project. And click Create. Once you're in, you'll see these icons line up at the bottom. Each one takes you to a different page. I won't be covering all the icons, but don't worry, by the end of this video, you'll be navigating like a pro. But first, let's quickly set up our projects. Head to File, Project Settings, under Master Settings. You can adjust your timeline format, stuff like frame rate and resolution, super easy. And then click save starting with the media page on the top left corner you'll find all your connected drives and to the right you'll find all the files that's connected to those drives let's add a clip and then add it to a media pool so select a clip right click and select add into media pool and then this section is where all the clips that you add from your drives will be so you can add as much clips as you want let's head over to the cut page now all the clips in your media pool is in the top left corner. Okay, let's double click on a clip to open it in the viewer. This green bar below it is called the clip marker bar. Let's set an in and out point where we're going to cut our clip. Now grab the plate and slide it to set an in point by pressing I. And then slide it along again and press O for the out point. Now to insert this into your timeline, you can click this button right here the pen button or alternatively you can hold shift and f12 okay let's head over to the edit page i'll show you how to cut and import media without using the media or the cut page inside your media pool let me just delete all these clips this is what it will look like when it's empty to import clips make sure your media pool selected right click and select import media and then you can find your clip, select and open. Now drag the clip onto the timeline and boom, DaVinci creates a new timeline automatically for you. Perfect. Let's get organized by creating some bins. Right click and say new bin, name the bin and then you can just drag and drop your footage inside the bin. You can make as many bins as you want and organize your footage. Okay, before we start cutting, one last thing is this little button right here, the timeline view options. You can select stack timelines if you have multiple timelines to quickly switch between them. You can change your background to checkered, black or gray. I like checkerboard. And you can change your track and audio, your video and audio height. This comes in very handy as I find myself using this constantly. You can also use the shortcut shift and the mouse scroll button. Okay, let's start cutting. Click on this blade icon. Hover your blade over the clip and just click. You can make as many cuts as you want. You can also use the playhead and control B if you're more of a shortcut person. Shortcut. <laughs> Get it? These tools will also come in handy a lot. The snapping tool. This one's awesome for aligning clips perfectly without having any gaps in your clips. And the link tool is like glue for your clips. It glues your audio and video together. If you want to unlink just one clip, right click and deselect link clips. Let's add some B-roll. Go to media pool, drag and drop the clip on top of the other clip. DaVinci Resolve automatically creates new channels every time you do this. You can have as many channels as you want. You can drop clips on top of each other, stack them multiple times and DaVinci will create new channels. It will also create corresponding audio channels as well. Let's add some lower thirds. Go to your effects tab and then select, oh, let me just put out the way, titles, and then let's select a lower third. This one looks nice. Just drag it on top of your clip and then let's play it. Oh, that looks good. Let me just extend it a little bit. And there we go. Now to change the text in the lower third, you'll see at the top right corner, you can change the main text there. Let's say Safari, that's good. You can change the font and the size and the bottom text as well. I won't be doing that now, this is just an example. 
Let's drop in some music. I like using Pixabay. They've got some great free stuff. I'm not sponsored, by the way. Oh, this looks good. Let's download that. You can either import it through Media Pool or just drag it straight onto your timeline. Select Import Media, go to Downloads, select your track and open. Or you can find the file in your drive and then drag it straight onto your timeline. DaVinci will add it to your Media Pool as well. Perfect. Now, if you've got someone talking on camera and you want the music to dip while they're speaking, this is where keyframes will come in handy. Let's make the track a little bit bigger. Now, if you hover your mouse over this white line, you'll see that it changes into two arrows. We will use this line to add our keyframe. Let's add the first keyframe by pressing Alt and left click and then another keyframe next to it. That's before the speaking starts. And let's do the same thing at the end of the clip after the speech. In the middle of those keyframes, click on the line and drag it down. This will automatically lower the volume of the music and bring it back up to where it was. The next thing we want to do is add some transitions. Before we can do that, make sure your clips are on the same channel. Otherwise, some transitions won't work properly. Let's find a transition. Go to make sure in the effects tab under video transitions. If you hover on the transition, depending on where your playhead is, you can see a preview of that transition. Drag it and drop it on your clip. Perfect. Done. If you want to fade your audio in and out, you can do this by selecting this white fade handle. Drag it to the right to fade the audio in. We can do the same thing on the other side and drag it to the left to fade the audio out. We can do the same thing on the video channel as well. Perfect, now that we're done with our clip, everything looks nice, the editing, we need to add some color and vibrance. Let's head over to the color page. Now, all your clips are laid out next to each other here in this section right here. Each individual clip has its own node section and each clip can have multiple nodes. The fastest way to get a good color is by clicking the auto balance button. This will give you a good starting point. You can further tweak this with the lift, gamma and gain in your primary's color wheels. Now the temperature and the tint is to adjust white balance. If you've got white balance issues on your clip, alternatively, you can use the dropper tool to automatically adjust your white balance. Now to get your grade applied to another clip. Let's say you want to apply the grade to this clip right here. Make sure the clip you want the grade applied to is selected. Go to the clip with the grade, right click and select apply grade. Or alternatively, you can hover over that clip and press the middle mouse button. And finally, well done, we're ready to export our project. Let's go to the deliver page. Here you can export the entire timeline or just a specific section. Say you want just a small part of your project exported, you can select the in and out range or alternatively just say entire timeline. Okay, let's name our file, choose where to save it. Okay, for YouTube, MP4, H.264 or 5 will be good. H.265 is a bit better. Auto, I just leave it on auto for the best performance. You can choose your graphics card or your CPU, but auto works for me. Just say add to render queue and then render all. Okay, once this green bar on the top here has reached the end, your movie is complete. Now you can watch it back. Make sure everything looks great and your video is playing correctly and everything looks good before you upload it to YouTube. Perfect. If you want to learn more about DaVinci Resolve or the color page or Fusion in-depth tutorials, let me know in the comments below. Have you seen this?